Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. If you're new here, this is where I review an entire sewing pattern collection, kind of like sitting at Joanne and looking through the pattern books with a good friend. We're gonna take a look at each pattern and I'm just gonna kind of say what comes to mind in terms of fit, fabrication, design, and those kinds of things. Today we're looking at New Look Fall Collection, and we're starting off with this jacket and pants, essentially a suit. We have sizing eight through 20 all in one, and that's kind of what New Look, that's like New Look's big thing that's different than everybody else is that they have all their sizes in one. Now that also means that the sizing is not very inclusive on the small end or on the high end. So it kind of is what it is. If you're a, a mid-size person, these are gonna be great for you, but um, just not super inclusive for anyone else. Now that that's out of the way, this is a fitted unlined jacket with a notched collar, patch pockets, long sleeves, bust darts, and stitched hems. Ankle length pants have invisible side zipper. Okay, this feels like kind of, I don't know, a little bit of a step back in terms of fashion. I mean, I guess in a way it's pretty classic, right? I mean, we have the classic notched collar blazer. We're going to talk about this shoulder length here in a second. Three buttons, patch pockets. Um, it does have a curved um, center front, which is nice and feminine and flattering. And then the pants, as they said, have a side zipper, so there's no closure here at all. And then they are straight leg, pencil pants, whatever you want to call it. There's also a dart here. So th this is not intended to be a drop shoulder. Um, it is too long for her shoulder by about this much. So what is that? Maybe two or three inches. And you can tell it's meant to be up on her shoulder because this part of the sleeve cap has a bump in it, meaning that there is space there in the sleeve cap for her shoulder. So this whole thing is supposed to be up on her shoulder more. Um, so check I mean, you should always be doing this, but check the shoulder length first before you do anything else if you're going to make this pattern. Um, yeah, there's just a printed version. It is unlined. I'm not sure if they said that, but unlined. And then here's the pant, kind of a classic pencil pant, right? I don't hate these. Um, these are actually really comfy if you make them out of like a ponte. I don't, we're going to look at their fabric suggestions um, when we get to the back of the envelope. But um, yeah, they make really, really comfortable pants to wear just because there's no like metal. I mean, there is on the side for the zipper, but there's, I don't know, it's just more comfortable not having like a clunky waistband with the front fly and all the pockets and everything. They're just super sleek. Okay, here's the back. Um, they did bring in, interestingly enough, um, darts on the neckline. We could have also used a dart here, again, to help with the shoulder length. Um, a lot of this wrinkling will go away once we pull this up onto her, in the right place, onto her body. And then a center back seam, no vent or anything, just, you know, I guess mm, it's lower than low hip. It's kind of like tunic length uh, jacket. Yeah, it's not a bad pattern. It's a good classic, you know, like if you have to wear suits in your life, if there's a need for you to do that, this is not a terrible pattern. You just have to work on some of the fit issues like everything else. Oh, there's also elbow darts. So there are a lot of really good fitting details, a lot of good tailoring things happening here. Um, it's just that shoulder length is way, way, way too long. Okay, so when we have all the sizes in one, that means body measurement wise, we've got a bust from 31 and a half up to 42, and a hip from 33 and a half to 44. So I don't think I fit into this. I think I'm a 22, yeah. So I wear like a 14, probably right now, probably a 16 in ready to wear, and I wouldn't be able to wear the pants here. I'd be able to wear the top because I'm pear-shaped, but I wouldn't be able to wear the pants without making some adjustments. So yeah, in, in the stores, you're anything smaller than a 14, you'll be good. Um, that said though, 
if you're like on the low end of ready to wear double zero zero two four six maybe um these might be too big for you so but ease wise in the bust we have four inches that's kind of a lot I mean not really I guess for a blazer three four yeah somewhere around there would be good depending on what you wear under your blazers and if you intend on having it buttoned a lot or not um, and then in the hip or sorry in the waist waist for the pants we have one and a half inches that's fair that's fair you can adjust that to be tighter fitting if you want but I think that's probably fine and then the hip is four and a half inches again very reasonable in terms of ease so yeah, I think, yeah, there's not a lot you'd have to do to this. You just have to do the normal checks and balances like we have to do with every pattern, but um, I can almost guarantee the shoulder length is going to be too long. Okay, next we have a skirt in two lengths. Please say it's bias cut. Sizing is 6 through 18. So they added one of the smaller sizes and took away one of the larger ones. Skirts are fitted through hip and have facings, invisible side zipper, narrow hems, and length variations. View B has a side slit. Okay, so it's not intended to be bias cut, but you could cut it on the bias. You would have to just change your um, uh, yardage amount. Um, it is a really beautiful skirt. I mean, these kinds of things, if you buy it in a, if you buy a silk fabric, which run um uh, maybe like 30 to 50 dollars a yard um you i mean they would charge hundreds of dollars for that in the stores and you can do it for like maybe a hundred dollars um and just really beautiful and sleek but it also looks really pretty in these satins that they have like at places like joanne and everything too i just love the clean waistband how there's no you know seam there all the facings on the inside simple side zipper and a side slit. It's just really simple, modern, sleek, beautiful. <clears throat> Here's the back. Fit wise, I know you guys are probably looking at this and thinking that something's wrong. And maybe it's a little bit too long through the back. But honestly, I think if most of us made this and put it on, we'd be pretty darn happy with how it turned out. So Okay, so it says, let's see, yardage wise. So if you're a size 18, let's say, and you're making it out of now, sometimes this silk, I'll say, does only come in 45 inch length or width, but that's still under two yards, one and seven eighths, they're saying. Now, if you cut it on the bias, there would be a little bit more. You'd need a little bit more. Um, but if not, then you could definitely get away with just a couple yards of it. So $60, $100 of like 100% like Italian imported silk. Um, really, really beautiful. Um, okay, so ease wise, the waist is one inch. That's perfect. And the hip is two and a half inches. Reasonable for a skirt, I think, because you don't have like a crotch and all that stuff that it's fighting against. Um, gosh, I would just love to see this in a, in a bias cut. You would have to, I believe, find 60 inch wide fabric. Um, it doesn't say how, oh yeah, back length from waist is 25 inches. So if you put that on the 45, I'm not good at that math, but would that fit on a single layer? Maybe, I don't know. I better visually, so I'd have to like lay it all out and see. But fabric wise, satin, crepe, crepe de chine, chalet, all those lightweight drapey fabrics. Um, lightweight fusible for the waistband and just a zipper and a hook and eye. Um, and just how they have it styled here, monochromatic, neutral tone, really, really pretty. I hope that top is going to be a part of this collection. I love that top. All right, now we have this skirt taking us way back to like 2010s. I feel like I had a skirt like this at like my very first like corporate job. Oh gosh. Um, 
sizing. Okay, they've included even a smaller size <laughs> on the smaller end and removed another one from the upper end. When that happens, my thinking is that they're trying to target, uh, not necessarily, well, I guess it is a little bit like younger people because typically younger people are smaller. I know that probably doesn't sound right, but like they could target people who are in like high school and college you know, before they have kids, before they put on like all the stress weight of being an adult and all that kind of stuff. That That's kind of my thinking. Um, most of the kids that I teach who are in high school or in college are smaller. I was smaller. So that's that's kind of what I think whenever they, like, why else would they add the smaller sizes and take away the bigger ones? You know, it's got to be something to do with, like, age and lifestyle, right? I don't know. That's just my two cents on that. Pencil skirts in three lengths have front princess seams, back darts, knee length A and B have back slits. A has peplum and optional trim. Mini length C and mid calf length D have side front slit skirts have back invisible zipper closures. Okay, so we've got the waistband, we've got the princess seams, and they've chosen to do a color block here, which I think really dates it. I think this really makes it just go right back to like casual corner days. Who remembers the casual corner? <laughs> um, the little peplum thing. This was one of the very first patterns that I bought when I first started sewing. Um, I did make it out of the very wrong fabric, um, but it, it was like sewn well. I was proud of the sewing. Um, but these days I would never add peplums to my hips just to like add extra width there. I would never do that. Um, this one with the little slit is kind of cute. I could get behind that one. And this one longer one. Now this is probably the most uh, fashion forward in terms of what we would see people wear today. Um, like I could see Meghan Markle in something like this with like a high boot, you know what I mean? Um, and a close fitting top. So the longer lengths versus knee length, I guess, is what makes it a little bit more modern. Okay, here's the back. So center back zipper, uh, one dart on each side, which might be a little bit long for her. That's why all of this is happening. She just doesn't have a big enough butt to fill this out. Um, so that's very a per very personal thing. Also, doesn't this one seem longer than this one? Because this one's not that's not happening on this side, and it also just looks shorter. So that's interesting, right? And then the opening in the back, like the little kick flip or whatever, is just the the seam allowance is turned under and top stitched. That's an interesting choice, especially because they did a blind hem on it. Like you're going to go through the trouble of doing a blind hem with no visible stitching and then put this little visible stipping, stitching in, you know, that seems kind of weird. Hmm. I don't know. The only other way to do it would have been to do a facing, you know, where the the hem, like a hem band, and it would come up and over and down. I guess for new look, that's probably a little, I'm asking for too much. Okay, so that puts the sizing of this at a 22 inch waist up to a 30 inch waist. The hip is 31 and a half up to 40. Um, you'll need a little bit of interfacing yardage wise skirt B out of 60 inches is a one yard wonder so that's fun so is skirt C in the larger size that's fun love those and then finish measurements on the hip is the only one they're going to give us and it has four and a half inches of ease fabrics are cotton and cotton blends crepe jacquard lightweight wool wool blends sateen satin silk and silk types yeah, I mean, they've obviously styled it here for more of like a suiting. So gabardine, was that not included? Um, really any bottom weight, you could do like a PK. Um, I mean, there's lots and lots and lots of options. I don't know that I would do cotton. That feels not right. Um, 
pencil skirts. I don't know about cotton blends even. Crepe, I guess, depending on like how weighty it was. Hmm. Jacquard makes sense. Lightweight wool, wool blends make sense. Sateen makes a lot of sense. Yeah, stretch twill even would make sense. Satin, I'm not sure. Silk and silk tights, I'm not sure. And Shantung would be okay too. Similar, like crispy, like a like a jacquard kind of. Brocade would be a good option. <clears throat> Something a little bit more um, structured. Doesn't have to be weighty, but I do think structure is important. Okay, here's a cutie little top for like the modern fashionista type following the trends. Size 6 to 18. So I guess for them, that's the middle, the like smack dab in the middle of their size range. Three quarter sleeve top and A and sleeveless top B have front crossover details. Short sleeve top C has front armhole cutouts. Oh, yeah. This is like ripped straight from ready to wear. So crossover top. Um, this is probably the shortest of the lengths. And then they have a um, elbow length sleeve. Set in sleeve. The sleeve seams are in the right place. Nice neckline, not too much gaping is happening. Um, interesting they chose it out of a sweater knit here. This rib knit makes a little bit more sense to me, but this one is what we see all the time, or at least even that might be a little bit outdated. I don't know that I see this as much as I used to like one or two years ago. I think the rib knit one is longer too. And then that one's just omitting the crossover. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of girls who are going to really like this. Um, plain backs, nothing really happening on the back at all. Um, okay, so 6 through 18. Um, most of these are one yard wonders. So that's really interesting. The bust is a, a goes up to a 40 inches, I think. Oh, I might be right, right on the cusp of that. I think I'm a 20 in the bust and a 22 in the hip. I think, I think, I think, but you know, you can, you can grade out one size, I think pretty easily, right? Or if you took away, like if you didn't use all the five eighths inch seam allowances, um, you would, buy, you could buy yourself up to an inch for each seam line. So that would be two inches circumference wise, two inches in the waist and two inches in the bust. So then that would work for someone who's at like a 20. Um, okay, it does have negative ease, which again is why I think the sweater knit was such an interesting choice. This does not have a lot of stretch in it. So either they, you'd have to size up that's just why I thought a rib knit would be a better, a better choice. Let's see what else they recommended fabric wise. Stretch knit such as interlock, jersey, uh, sorry, interlock, jacquard, jersey, lightweight sweater knit. Yeah, I wish they, again, I'm going to keep saying this until I start getting what I want, but I wish they put the percentage right here. There's plenty of space. Put it right here so when we're shopping online and when we're doing, you know, analysis like this we can see how much stretch they're recommending but I'm pretty sure it's going to be somewhere around the 50 to 75 percent range um, for that half inch of negative ease that they're that they're doing here um, out of a sweater knit you could have positive ease and be fine the rib knit you'd really want um, rib knit jersey interlock, those you'd want to have the negative ease for. Cute little top though. And it is probably very easy to sew. It's easy, it says right there in the corner. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we have our classic button down. It would not be a new look collection without another riff on a button down, but this one doesn't even seem like they riffed on it too much. It seems pretty classic. Sizing wise is six to 18. Again, right smack dab in the middle of their size range. 
Um, fitted blouse has pointed shirt collar, collar band, shaped hemline darts, and narrow hem. View A has short sleeves. View B has long sleeves with continuous lap, pleats, and button cuffs. So pretty classic, right? We do have the fisheye darts here as well as the um, side bust darts. The darts seem maybe just a little bit long for her, but everything else seems fine. You see how, talking about shoulder length, um, how this one does kind of fall off her shoulder a little bit, but there's just enough for her shoulder to fit into the space that they've allotted for the sleeve cap. You're not getting any weird bubble or anything there. If this were further up on her shoulder, then you'd have wrinkles down here because it would be fighting with all of this area. This is actually exactly how this shirt is supposed to fit, even if this seam isn't exactly perfectly like up on top of her shoulder. It's maybe not meant to be. Um, but the they have done the harder of all the collars here with the collar stand and the pointed collar. Um, and then, yeah, just a button band, curved hem, cuffs. Yeah, pretty pretty standard, straightforward stuff. If you don't have a button down in your arsenal, in your stash already, this is not a bad one. This is probably as good as they get. Fit looks really good. The back has fisheye darts as well. So if you're someone who is pear, is hourglass, you want to accentuate your curves through your waist, um, this is a good option. There's also shoulder darts too, which is another nice touch, especially if you have like a rounded back. Um, that will really help alleviate some of those fit issues you might already have. Okay, so we have finished garment measurement wise, four inches in the bust and five in the waist. And they're not giving us a hip measurement. Um, Maybe it's on the pattern pieces, but it's not here. Chiffon, handkerchief linen, lightweight jersey, silk like jacquard. Lightweight jersey? Um, that When I see that, something that's so glaringly weird, I assume all the rest of these are wrong. Like they copied and pasted this from somewhere else and then didn't edit it or something. I don't know. But you're looking for shirting fabrics, cottons, cotton blends. I mean, I guess the linens, um, chambray, things like that. And then eight buttons or 12 buttons, depending on the length of the, or depending on if you have the cuffs or not. Okay, so next is a classic little Chanel type jacket in sizes. 8 to 18. 8 to 18. So that's actually a size smaller or one size fewer, right? The rest of them had seven and this one has six. Let me go back and see. What did you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So they've had to um, remove an entire size I'm assuming for like logistical reasons with the tissue paper like if they added one more they'd have to add an entire sheet of tissue paper and that that was too expensive I don't that would be an interesting conversation with them like how do you decide like what is the tipping point in terms of we can't do all the sizes like why can't they just give us four through 20? on everything. Like, is it because it would require too many sheets of tissue paper? And then also like how many, like how much can a sheet of tissue paste paper possibly cost? Do you know what I mean? I would just love to know the decision making process there in terms of adding sizing or not. Um, jackets have princess seams, neckline trim and sleeve length variations. All right. So we have the collarless, buttonless. I mean, it doesn't cross over and button like normal. This is a tweed and then they've like, you know, zhuzhed it up on the sides to get that Chanel type look. Um, this one looks like it has bias binding finish maybe. Um, this one does have buttons, but they don't actually work. 
And then this one has a zipper up the front um, with little like fringe detail. Or maybe that's, I'll have to look at the notions. Maybe that's not even zipped. That might just be the, um, the fringy stuff like touching each other. All right, fit wise, it looks pretty good. I mean, we did have those darts or those seams going like the princess seams. So that helps a lot. Shoulder looks good. Neckline looks okay. A little bit of gaping here, but not too, too much. Sleeve looks good. Yeah. It's not bias binding, but it is some kind of trim there for sure. Oh, that one out of like a brocade, I guess. Oh, and it has a little button thing. Cute. Cute, classic. Um, back print says seems to, but that's it. This is, these are all really, really easy patterns to whip together. Um, and this one is lined also. So we've got the finished bust measurement is, um, five and a half inches of ease. Again, for a jacket, that's, that's pretty good. If you're in between sizes though, you definitely have enough room to size down. So brocade, jacquard, lightweight denim, linen, linen blends, le lightweight wool, wool blends, PK, sateen, satin, seersucker, twill. Ironically, they didn't mention tweed, which is what they made the sample out of. <laughs> so there's also that. Um, shoulder pads, and they say they're optional, but shoulder pads are not optional, you guys. If they've designed it, for shoulder pads, they've designed extra room in here. There's more um, wearing ease in here to accommodate for the shoulder pad. So it's definitely not optional. Um, then half inch flexible braid is one of the trim options. Buttons for the beige one. One inch pre-gathered lace for D. And then... E had three buttons. Lace, they're saying? For D? Oh, lace. Okay, interesting. I thought it was fringe. I guess you could do any trim you want. Lace is interesting, though. Yeah, you could have a lot of fun trimming this one out with all the different options that there are these days. Okay, now we have oh the classic trench coat. I think if I've ever said the word classic more in one of these videos, you guys have to let me know. All right, it comes in alphanumeric sizing, so extra small through 2XL. Very loose fitting, okay? So we're gonna wanna expect to see that in terms of the ease when we look at the finished garment measurements. Online coat, double-breasted button front closure, drop shoulder, dropped shoulder uh, with shoulder pads. Back neck darts, notched collar, side seam pockets, self carriers, belt with purchase, slide buckle, and length variations. Okay, so notched collar. The drop shoulder here is not as dropped as I think we might be used to, but you can see there's no like weird, there's like a baby bump, but I don't know that that's necessarily the sleeve cap. Over here, you can tell it's nice and smooth. So if you go back and look at that other pattern, you can see that, you know, that one was clearly way, way, way too long. We've got kind of a pretty wide sleeve happening here. Um, really high, maybe a rolled collar, which are some of my favorite co uh, collars. They're just fun to sew because you're just like sewing, sewing, sewing. You don't realize you're doing anything like magical <laughs> and then you put it on and you're like whoa this is so cool how it works like it just kind of like under stitching is magical you don't really realize what you're doing it's the same thing with the rolled collar um so we do have the belt carriers and the belt they have it cinched in a lot you can see all these folds here and then this one is just below the knee length this must be thigh and this must be floor or ankle Okay, we don't get any pictures of the back on this one, but it does, we'll look at the bigger um, line drawings because there are some interesting details here. But alphanumeric sizing for them means 29 and a half up to 48 inches. 
So this must be their full range. They haven't included a 24 or 26 on any of the other patterns though. Um, but either way, this is, this is everything they've got. Um, so oversizedness, the bust is going to be 29, 39, 14 inches. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty oversized. They might have, they might have gone in a little too hard on that. I, I don't know. Anything more than like 10 feels, I don't know. Check the shoulder length, right? If the shoulder length hits you right on the like outer edge of your shoulder, then the rest of it kind of looks like it was intentionally too big. But if that shoulder seam, seam is like dropping down to your bicep, then it just looks like the jacket's way too big on you and it's swallowing you all around. So check the shoulder seam. And then whatever size that is, just make that everywhere would be my advice. So gabardine poplin raincoat fabrics for sure. Super cute. Um, lightweight fusible, 11 buttons, one buckle, and a pair of shoulder pads. Um, note these shoulder pads are not optional. So who the heck knows? All right, let's look at the line drawings. So the backs, you can see their side seam pockets which are going to be floppy pockets, which is really annoying, especially because this is lined. Um, I would change them out maybe to patch pockets or maybe top stitch them down, something, something to keep them from flopping around. And then you have like a good vent here. The one that has this little seam here is not that seam allowance just turned under. It's like a proper one with a facing and everything. And then you have the neck darts that they mentioned. And then here's the longer version as well. So A and B, there's only two lengths. So A must be like thigh length and B and these two are the same. Okay, what next? Something classic? Well, I mean, kinda. So they're calling this a junior's corset, pants, and skirt. What size do we think we're gonna get here? Oh, a 3-4 to a 13-14. I, I don't think I've ever seen a junior's pattern before. I don't, I've never seen that. I'm dying to see what the, what the body measurement chart looks like. Corsets have neckline and trim variations, boning and side zipper closure. Pants and pleated skirts have side zipper closure. Skirts have optional trim. Are they just like preparing for prom already? Um, it is, yeah, a, yeah, I mean, it's a corset, um, boning for sure. This one, come, oh, they all come down to a point. Um, all the seams, they're getting a pretty good fit here. There is some wrinkling here, which makes me think it's just too long on her. But again, that's something you should be checking anyways. And then what is this? Just like a pleated skirt? It almost looks like a bubble hem, but I don't think it is a bubble hem. I don't see why this is juniors. I would wear this. <laughs> I would wear this. So this one has a notched neckline. This one has like a faux lace up front. And then this one has like a turned over, I don't know, kind of like a tuxedo vibe, I think, um, version. And then these pants. The pants are nice. Yeah, classic, classic. Let's look at these sizes. I'm dying. What is this? Oh, that's where the pleats let out. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I don't love the skirt if I'm being honest, but it kind of is what it is. Okay, so body measurements, 28 inches up to 35 so interesting um because the other ones i think if it I, yeah so does 14 overlap a women's 14 i wonder if it's similar to a uh mrs size 18 and a 18 w for women's where it's not this it's not the same even though the numbers are the same 
it's based off of a different block altogether. So it actually doesn't mean the same thing at all. Interesting. I'm kind of bummed. I want this for an adult. Um, and then they're all less than a yard for the corsets. And the pants, yeah, and the skirt, those are all reasonable. We have one and a half inches of ease in the bust. Brocade, crepe, crepe back satin, crepe de chine, jacquard satin, chantong, taffeta, tissue lame, velvet. Yeah, they're recommending all of those like specialty, special occasion type fabrics. And then a ton of notions. You guys can pause to read through all of those. Um, but the line drawings. Uh, we didn't even see this one with the little rosette. Yeah, that's not listed here. Huh. All right. There's also this halter version. And then that must be the version the model's wearing. A, B, A, A, B. Hmm. There can't be two A's, that's for sure. Something funky going up, going on around here. It's either this is A or this is A. I'm assuming since it's not on the thing that this is not supposed to be here. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, the pants are also really nice. Like, I kind of like a simple wide leg pant like that. I want this outfit. I want this outfit in adult sizing. I'm sure I could piece it together, but uh, okay. Now we have another little prom dress looking thing. This is Mrs. Sizing though. Um, so that puts it at eight to 18 day or evening dresses have bodice with princess seams, full skirt, sleeve and neckline variations. And oh, the purse pattern is included. Optional self belt with purchase slide buckle closure or sash view E clutch purse has snap closure. Okay, well, um, yeah, um, oh man, there's always one. There's always one where I just, my mind goes blank. I don't know what it is. Maybe the fabric, maybe it's her hair. Maybe the fabric. Yeah, I'm thinking the fabric and the design don't go together. This is giving me more of like a retro like 50s vibe and this heavyweight satin just isn't doing it for me it's it's more mm, they tried to make it more nighttime I get that but I really think it's just meant to be a cotton dress this is like mimicking Ankara waxed cotton that makes sense um yeah I cannot think of a single like nighttime even like brocade jacquard that would make that look <sighs> yeah I'm having a hard time maybe because the gathers are not gathering well because the fabric is so heavyweight it does fit her well there's nothing wrong with the fit at all it's just I think that fabric choice is not my fave for this design um like even this one I can I am only seeing these in daytime fabrics this one, however, that sweetheart neckline and the teeny tiny little um, straps, maybe more. I don't know. I'd have to do some research. I'd have to do some Pinteresting to see. I guess that could be like a brocade. I don't know then. If it's not the nighttime fabrics that are throwing me off, then what is it? The headband, the neckline, I don't know, something. Something's just weird. That's not helping either, like at all. That makes it look like it doesn't fit very well, and I don't think that that's the case. I don't think the fit was that bad at all. I, may, I think this fabric is cheap, and it looks cheap. That's what I'm going to go with. It's the wrong fabric for any pattern, not just this one. <laughs> um, okay, so we have, let's see, finished garment measurements in the bust. We have two and a half inches of ease. That's fair. And then 
cotton and cotton blends, crepe, crepe de chine, damask, linen and linen blends, PK, sateen, satin, shantung, taffeta. I mean, I think you could honestly make it out of any um, mid, heavy, lightweight to light, midweight fabric. Um, not a ton of drape. You need some structure for this bodice, for sure. Um, but there's a lot more options than what's just listed here. So, dang. I was hoping I was going to get through all 10 of these and not have a single one that was just like, what the heck? Um, <clears throat> Mrs. Dress and Coat, each in two lengths, jacket and a bag pattern. Again, sizing 10 through 22. Okay, this is the largest of the size ranges we've seen. Um, and you can tell it's kind of like an older person's design, right? I don't, wouldn't see any teenagers, any college girls, anybody in their 20s wearing this, right? So maybe I, that's the only thing that I can assign to like why some sizes are on the larger end and some sizes are on the smaller end. And I don't know how they make that decision. I, again, would love to sit down with whoever's in charge of that and figure out like what the reasoning is. But sleeveless, A-line, princess seam dresses have back zipper closure and come in two lengths. Long sleeve coats and jackets have bust starts. View E has frog closure. View F matching tote bag. Okay. So we've got a, actually under here a really cute like 90s dress. This jacket. Well, I mean, first of all, her. I don't think there's a closure up here. I think it's like way too big because see how this one, it stays closed on its own. This is pulling open. I think because the neckline is too big and like, imagine if we were to pull this up, all of this would come with it. Maybe the shoulder length is doing that shoulder thing again. Yeah. I think it's just way too big on her. Like maybe two sizes too big even. And then this weird sleeve length is also not really helping. But the dress design is super cute. I love this little design. Like I could get behind these line drawings for sure. But the sample, I don't know. Let's. I hope we get a picture of just the dress. Thank you. I love when they do this. Yeah, the dress is exceptional. The dress is really, really, really good, you guys. Yeah, that's really, really pretty. And honestly, you could wear this to like a daytime event, um, a daytime wedding or a more casual wedding or like vacation dinner, you know, like a date, all kinds of places. This is really, really good. Yep. And that's all it is. It's super simple to sew. For what it's worth, that is too. I just think there's some major fit issues going on. The frog closure, I will say, does age this a little bit. You could do something cool. They, I've seen, um, you know how bows are so big right now? I've seen people doing like where it's an entire bow and then like somehow the unattached side of the bow gets snapped on over here or something. That could be really fun to play around with like a bow or something. And then there's your bag unlined. Weird. No, it's lined because that would be an exposed seam allowance. I don't know why you can see that stitching though and also why it looks unlined. Like why they didn't color it in differently. Here's the back of that coat. Again, just way, way, way too big. Way too big. But the dress is really good. I might be grabbing this. It does have the larger sizes, so it does go up to a 44 inch bust and up to a 46 inch waist. So I would have to grade 46. Am I 46? 
what is the um, finished garment measurements on the hip? We're not going to get those. Darn. All right. So it says that A and B, which is the dress, the bust has three and a half inches of ease. I'm not sure that I saw that reflected on the sample. Are y'all seeing three and a half inches in here? Maybe, but there is a lot of seams where you can fudge with that. So even if you are not a size, what was it, 22, um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six seam allowances. And remember, it's an inch per seam line. So that's six inches to play around with. You could essentially make this six inches bigger just by taking quarter inch seam allowances everywhere. So that that includes the hip, waist and hip as well. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking at the sizing and thinking, oh, it's not inclusive. It's not, but you know, we have the seam allowances for a reason. So let's use them. Um, fabrics, they are not separating out. Yeah, really not separating out a from a and b from c and e or c d and e and we don't get any fabric recommendations for the bag which makes me think that the bag is made from these same fabrics i don't know shally chambray crepe laundered cottons laundered silk rayons linen and linen blends sand wash silk that would be beautiful silks and silk types yeah you could also do like the polyester crepes um yeah just think back to the 90s think back to those dresses that you know princess diana wore and stuff like that and you'd find the right the right fabric i'm picturing something a little bit more lightweight drapey silky you know slinky type of fabric personally um, but C, D, and E, which are the jackets, double Georgette, Georgette, novelty sheer, that's an interesting thought, organza, that's it? Oh, you can do all of these or these. Um, okay. Okay, sure. Um... And then again, no fabrics for F. Like there's really no mention of F at all. So I'm not entirely sure what the point of that bag is. It doesn't view F matching tote bag. But when you look at the picture here, this is not that bag. It's almost like they were like, hey, let's just throw this in there. Right? This is not that. That's for sure. Definitely not. So confusing. So weird. Um, okay. You know what I wonder? Actually, let's see on this. Do we get bag F? One and some odd yards and then same amount of interfacing. But they don't even say like the heavyweight interfacing. So somebody's going to go out and buy freaking crepe and lightweight fusible and try and make this bag and they're going to be so sad. Just because they don't know any better. Oh, man. Listen, sometimes it's me against the world, it feels like. All right, but that is the last of the patterns for New Look Fall. Um, I think you guys are pretty, can guess kind of what I think. It's, it's a good, solid, you know, classic collection. There's a lot of really great patterns that you would make and wear all the time for years and years and years and years and years to come. Never go out of style. Um, a few trendy ones, but not too many. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty strong collection. It's small, but it's mighty. I mean, there, I could definitely see myself, if I didn't have the stash I already had, I could see myself buying this one for sure. I might even consider this trench coat. It feels like the the details of it, the construction of it feels really strong. If this were in my size, I'd absolutely want an outfit like this. Um, I kind of loved this top for sure. Um, and this skirt, absolutely, hands down. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty decent. That's like half the collection. But 
I would love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I do read all of them, I promise. Um, it's a fun little conversation to have down there. So read a com leave your own comment, read other people's comments and reply back to them and let's start a conversation about new look fall. But that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.